Hi there. We've been getting a lot of spy photos and filming reports this past month for the Game of Thrones prequel series, House of the Dragon, ever since they restarted exterior filming again the first week of September. That before that, when filming on season one first began, last week of April, first week of May, they had this really big exterior shoot in Cornwall. After that, for the rest of the summer, they were filming entirely interior scenes at their big studio at Leavesden. These don't generate spy photos and filming reports, so all the news channels didn't have much to pick apart and analyze and, and talk about. But since they've restarted exterior filming, that gives us a lot more clues. Of chief interest, of course, is what is the time frame for season one? Particularly, what is the stopping point? When are they going to end? I've talked about this in preceding videos, the question of will the Civil War begin at the end of season one as a cliffhanger? Or will they pad out season two for character development? Because we know that they're filming at least through Lena's funeral in the year 120 AC, the Civil War starts nine years after that. So there's a question of, this isn't a bad thing. This is actually what I'd want them to do. I wish that they would take season two to cover that full decade instead of skipping it to build up Lannister characters, Stark characters, to make it a more fully realized world. So with all the news coming out, we're trying to put together all the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle to figure out what exactly is the schedule for this. In the video right before the one you're watching right now, I talked about the new casting information about the Small Council characters, what this might tell us. Because they didn't cast the ones that were there all the way at the end, Iron Rod and Orwell. And if they come up, even, even if they did, well, they might have just been named to the Small Council in the year 120. That doesn't necessarily mean we'd be seeing the Civil War break out nine years after that. But I'm trying to piece together all the information, and this is actually based on a dozen different reports that I'm summarizing into this video. Because things are really busy. I mean, just this past week w was insane. We had new spy photos. We had a massive casting announcement wave. And we had a podcast interview with George R. R. Martin talking to the new showrunner. Which was only really 20 minutes talking about the show, and it wasn't that much, but it generated a lot of interest. So all of this is piling up. And... Bits and pieces came out from a dozen different sources of, hey, this was the week they're filming in Portugal, this is the week they're filming in this part of England. I'm condensing it all and summarizing it into this one big video now, which will have three internal sections I'm going to try to move through relatively quickly while still getting it all across. First section, filming schedule. Where are they physically filming one week to the next? That we pretty much figured out every location they're going to use through the end of season one filming around Halloween, last week of October. And the question of will they extend into November and December, is that mostly just pickup shots? Second section, a list was leaked out, which we think is accurate, uh, of a full breakdown of which director is going to work on specifically which episode. And then there's a the question of how does that match up to spy photos we have of a few of these directors actually on set. Cross-reference that with all of our other spy photos of, okay, this is clearly an event we know they're filming, this is Rainier's wedding, we know this is Lena's funeral, and exactly how much time are we going to cover in season one. So this is a combination of the location schedule I'm giving to give you a heads up on when we can expect spy photos. The spy photos, in turn, will give us more story information. This will tell us when exactly does season one end. With that in mind, part one, the filming schedule, which we have from a couple of sources, but this is all confirmed. Like I said, summer they were doing interior stuff. Then the first week of September, without warning, wow, they're filming in northern England. We're getting spy photos from Derbyshire, which is 
up in the mountains and, and there's cliffs and valleys and things. We're not really sure what that was filming for. Some think it might be the veil. We're not sure, but that was the first week of September. Then second and third weeks, they've been doing a lot of filming in Cornwall again. These huge battle scenes on a beach. But Cornwall filming wrapped just last week, and we thought they were done there, but it was for that specific location that just a few days later we saw them filming what we think is the funeral of Rhaenyra's mother in Devon. It's like a hour and a half drive up from Cornwall. It's the next county north of that. They spent maybe a day or two filming in Devon, but that, that's essentially part of the Cornwall shoot in terms of tracking where all of the actors are and where they're filming the, the, to get a rough timeline because they can't be in two places at once. But now they seem to have wrapped Cornwall, they've wrapped Devon. What are they filming right now, last week of September? Because I'm recording this Wednesday night. For the past 10 days or so, extending into two weeks, they have been building a massive tournament set in Surrey, which is southwest of London, specifically near a town called Aldershot in Surrey. It's, it's near this landmark called the, this hill. It's called Caesar's Camp. And this tournament set is huge. It took a long time to build. It's an exterior shot. They're not permanent buildings, but there's just this huge amount of furnishings they're putting in there, chairs and, and couches and things people would bring to a tournament like that. We haven't gotten good spy photos from it yet because they put up a fence. Then again, Daily Mail has spy drones going around to get to remote beaches in Cornwall. So I think we haven't had good spy photos from it yet, mostly because the cast hasn't shown up and they haven't actually been filming yet. To our knowledge, filming has not started yet in Surrey, but it, it probably will tomorrow because Earlier today, yesterday, England time, a lot of horses just arrived at the Surrey set for the tournament. Now, there's a couple of big tournaments in the Rogue Prince prequel novella during the, the reign of Rhaenyra's father, Viserys. There's one right at the beginning where Kristen Cole joins the King's Guard. There's a really big one, uh, the Blacks and the Greens tournament, we call it, and it's year 111, where... Rhaenyra and Allison infamously showed up to a tournament, both of them wearing the colors of their faction, Rhaenyra in Targaryen black, Allison wearing green, and then everyone copied them. And that featured a lot of horse jousting, and Kristen Cole beat everyone. But that was a few years before the last big tournament, which was at Rhaenyra's wedding to Laenor. That wasn't so much a joust as it is it focuses, the action of the story focuses on the melee, where Kristen Cole went into this black fury of rage, and he fought so hard he killed a man, Lenor's lover. So with this many horses and with all the melee stuff, they might be filming horses and melee stuff for multiple tournaments. More than one tournament scene might be filmed during this shoot. You know, they, they'd obviously use the one set for if they have more than one tournament scene. Now, what we have known for a while is that the main filming in Spain will be in the second and third weeks of October, centered in the city of Caceres, in the Extremadura region, which is along the western border with Portugal. This is the, well, I wouldn't say new King's Landing, but it is the new Dubrovnik. They're not going back to Dubrovnik. It, it's too crowded now from all the tourism. And at, I've made reports on this. Caceres actually was King's Landing for certain scenes in Season 7. The streets of King's Landing. And like this famous archway, a couple of the streets. It, they are returning to Caceres, which is nice. But from official reports we've gotten, they are drastically expanding how much they're filming within that historic landmark city that... They're spreading out to over a dozen major locations and major, over a dozen separate major scenes in different plazas and different squares and different streets and and mon and um, cathedrals and stuff. They are extensively using Caceres. It is the new Dubrovnik, the new real-life King's Landing. And of course, everyone there is really excited about how it'll boost tourism, and rightly so. 
So Caceres, one or two other uh, towns near there, like uh, Trujillo, uh, stuff like that. But that will be the core of filming, just as Cornwall was the big filming location in England, plus like a little bit in Devon. Spain, it's mostly Caceres for this season, because they filmed in a lot of locations in Spain throughout the run of Game of Thrones, from the north to the east. We'll see what happens. We don't think they're returning to the old Dragonstone locations in the Basque country on the Atlantic coast near the border with France, but maybe they just didn't tell us. Maybe that'll be next season. We don't know. But what we were told, or from various reports was that filming in Surrey would end last week of September, then a week would pass, and then second and third week of October, we'd get Caceres. Then we got a new report two weeks ago that they're going to be filming at another location in Spain, Granada, first week of October. So that fills in the gap there. Between last week of September, we're doing Surrey. Second week of October, we're doing Caceres. First week of October, it's Granada, which is in the southeast. It was the last Muslim holdout during the Reconquest in the Middle Ages, because it's up in the mountains. It's very rough territory, hard to conquer. Uh, specifically, they're filming at the Castle La Cajora, which they have actually filmed in Granada before for marine and stuff, countryside of marine things, but they've never filmed at this specific castle. So within the story, it's probably a new location. And we're trying to guess this. I'm going to make a separate video about it. It might be Sunspear, because we've never seen Sunspear before. I think more probably it might be one of the free cities. But the real question is which free city? That It might be part of the Triarchy storyline, so it might be Mir. Then again, based on cast members we've seen showing up, it might be Pentos. I think this is one of the free cities, just it's not King's Landing. The architecture is too different. Now, I had to re-record the audio section you're listening to right now for the past minute or so for two reasons. First, in the original version, I kept saying Grenada, like the Caribbean island, and not Granada, the region in Spain. I think that's me overcompensating for my New York accent that I'm, I'm worried about when I say a long A, and I, I did it like that. It's Granada, rhymes with Nevada, the state in the USA that Las Vegas is in. Now, that's a bad example to a lot of, let's say if you're an international viewer here, a lot of people in the United States say Nevada when it's really Nevada. So Granada is, is the part in Spain. I was overcompensating. And the thing is, I know the distinction between these two things. I, I am already aware of that. I just didn't notice until after I'd recorded it that I was doing that. And they went, wait a minute. I, just, I, I fell into it, wasn't paying attention to my mouth. So this is the core part where I talk about Granada the most. If I mispronounce it later in the video, it was, it was too difficult to edit out. You'll know why I did that. I've already apologized and said that was a mistake. This is me fixing it right here. The second reason I wanted to re-record right at this point is in the past few days we got an update on the filming situation at Surrey. That originally we were told that Surrey filming would end on Friday, October 1st. Then we started worrying, well we haven't got any spy photos of cast members showing up yet. Maybe the core filming will be first week of October and just overlap with filming in Granada, Spain. So I went on this whole tangent saying, well, could they overlap? Well, it depends on whether they're the same characters in the same storylines. That was all wrong. Turns out we were right the first time. I didn't need to give that whole explanation. Surrey filming has wrapped. On Saturday, we got new spy photos of them taking down the big tournament set. So that is the end of Surrey filming. That is the end of England filming, as far as we can tell. It's a clean break between last week of September and now October will be Spain filming. And the reason I, I bring this up is I'm not going to make a separate video about spy photos we got from Surrey, because we got hardly anything. Like, I made a video on the Derbyshire ones, on, on the Cornwall and Devon ones. We got nothing out of this, and it was kind of a letdown. Other than the things I'm showing on screen now, which are, we could tell they built this massive tournament set, 
but we got no spy photos of substance from it. We thought, oh, we'd be getting heraldry and things. It turns out we didn't. They, they hit it pretty well. Only thing we really saw was a giant Targaryen banner. We saw a better version of the wagon that had the House Strong sigil on the side, but we already saw that in Derbyshire, so those are nothing. Other than the scale of this tournament set, we kept thinking, well, I guess core filming will start when the cast shows up. The cast was probably already there. They just tightened security so we didn't notice them arriving. And that's what we're hearing from a lot of the spy reporters now that they've come back on the weekend. They said, this isn't like Cornwall where you could, where everything was really open on a beach. They tightened security around this. We could not get close to it. I mean, compared to this big open beach, Surrey is not only very hilly, there's, it's in a forest. So I guess the aerial spy drones had a harder time you know, seeing people through the trees. We only saw one actor in one shot, and it wasn't anything of detail for their costume, that from behind we saw Millie Alcock as young Rhaenyra arriving flanked by some Kingsguard uh, riding in on horses. But that matches what we already thought, that all of the tournament scenes would be up to the, the last tournament is the rhaenyra Lanor wedding tournament, and I said, I'm pretty sure that's the cutoff that it'll be young Rhaenyra up to and through her wedding, then a time skip, and they switch from Millie Alcock to Emma Darcy as adult Rhaenyra. So we already thought Millie Alcock is going to be Rhaenyra during the tournament. That's pretty much confirmed that she was there. Otherwise, we got no spy photos of substance out of this. That doesn't mean it's a small sequence. Just looking at the scale of this, the, the tents... The furniture, I guess a lot of them were filmed in, a lot of the scenes must have been inside of the tents, or walking out of them, or possibly night scenes of people discussing things at night in the tournament, but as for all, we thought something big was going to happen because all the horses just arrived, but apparently they only filmed with the horses for two days. Which, if you think about it, shouldn't be too surprising that Filming with live animals is difficult and can be dangerous because you don't want to hurt the horse or people. You have to set it up. You use it sparingly. I mean, think back to Game of Thrones Season 1 during the tournament sequence. Just how much screen time was actually taken up by horses charging? Not really that much. A lot of it was Ned walking around, talking to people in tents, or Arya talking to people in the bleachers. It wasn't, oh, Ned, fetch me the, hey, uh, Lancel, fetch the breastplate stretcher. That None of that involved horses. Because the actual horse charge thing, you know, it's, it's a dangerous stunt, so it's very limited. You actually do that very sparingly, and just artful editing makes it look more prominent than it is. You're not running horses for 12 hours a day. That would be you know, the, the animal rights stuff. That would tire the horses. So difficult to work with big live animals like that. Not that I don't think it'll be an impressive joust scene. I mean, just think of how much screen time is actually used with a horse charging, like a minute. It's not, you know, it's the focal point, but it's you're not running the horses for 12 hours a day, seven days a week. That's what actors are for. It, no, no. So, yeah, it only took two days of the actual specific joust part where they're charging at each other, and then they were done. And they put it at the very end of the shoot. That's just the jousting part. The melee part, they probably filmed in the parts where, like, Kristen, you know, beats a man to death. That doesn't involve horses. It was a melee fight. So that's probably all in there. It'll be a big scene. So they just really tightened security at Surrey, and we didn't get that many good photos out of it, but that filming is done now. And the spies from Granada are also saying they really tightened security at this thing, because it's a private castle. It's not like a beach. So I don't know if they kind of let people take spy photos at Cornwall because they wanted hype, and they went, okay, now we're filming in Granada first week of October. And they're tightening it now because series, it'll be harder to hide everything, but England filming ended when Surrey ended last week of September on October 1st, Friday. Then you have Granada filming first week of October. Then what we're all looking forward to, the huge return to Caceres filming second and third weeks of October. This is a region where they filmed before, so that means we already have veteran spy reporters in place. People who are taking spy photos in Game of Thrones Season 7 are already in place to be doing that here. Plus, this is a major city. 
I mean, there's, it's not some remote beach. There's people all around. We're bound to get really good spy photos out of this. Caceres finishes third week of October. Then the fourth and last week of October, they will be filming at Monsanto Castle in Portugal, which is just across the border from Caceres. It's like an hour and a half drive. I, I think they might even have the same crew going back and forth between the two locations in the same day. It's, it's not really a long drive. Now, they did clarify they're not filming in the town of Monsanto. It's specifically at the really impressive ruined medieval castle, the, the castle of Monsanto in Portugal. And they've been putting out in Portuguese, you know, they've been putting out calls for extras saying men should grow out their beards. These are the physical types of people we're looking for, men, women, young, old, all of that. We're not sure what they're filming there, though, as I said, if I had to guess, I think it's the Erie or something in the Vale, because it's a big castle up in the mountains, nowhere near the coast. It's probably the Vale. So we think that with the end of filming at Monsanto on October 31st, primary filming on season one of House of the Dragon will be done. There is the question of whether they'll continue filming into November and December, because some people have pointed out actor contracts specify that they could be filming through December. I think that's just a provision they put in in case they need to do reshoots, which is standard practice for every TV show, that Game of Thrones got really silly when the showrunners would make increasingly ridiculous schedules and essentially say, use up all of our rain days. Okay, then what happens if it rains? That they wanted to build, like, horse charges for the Battle of the Bastards on such a massive scale that Sapochnik told them, initially, right from the beginning, we are using up every rain day if we cannot afford to have a single day rained out or have a scheduling conflict. We will start losing scenes and just not be able to make them up at a later date. And that's what happened, and it got absurd. Plus, with, like, filming the Winterfell battle in Season 8, that, that was even worse. Of just They used up all their emergency days initially. Then the whole point of saving for a rainy day was beyond them, that no accidents are going to happen. You, we intentionally plan that some scenes will need to be reshot. That's why pencils have erasers. You, you budget time for mistakes. You don't just work up to the limit all the time. So I don't anticipate major filming in November and December. Then again, there were locations on here we just learned about, like Surrey or Grenada, but nothing huge. I mean, like a battle scene we would have heard about, like with the all the extensive filming in, in Cornwall and in Caceres, they're not going to do something on the scale of Caceres somewhere else in the middle of December. That, that's just not happening. So November, December might be pickup shoots and things, but it's a question, well, when is the rap party? That's a question I'd ask the showrunner. But yeah, it's pretty much, this is the schedule Game of Thrones had when it was filming. They usually ended late October to November. Then you go into post-production. And post-production is not just an afterthought. You're adding in a lot of expensive and complex CGI, like for the dragons or city extensions. That's just part of it. I mean, for any TV project, they will be working up until it premieres on editing together all of the footage, the art of film editing. And then you have like fixing the color grading and the sound editing. And beyond the artistic stuff, you have simply checking it for visual mistakes that if you treat the post-production process as an afterthought and rush through it, you're going to get visible coffee cups and water bottles on screen again. Th that is when that would be fixed. So if you rush the review phase of your work on any project, you're going to get visible mistakes. So I want them to take as much time as they need. No one says, oh, well, we finished the live-action filming part. Yeah, let's just rush through post-production. No, that is one of the most important parts. That's when it all comes together. This isn't something you rush. It's not a supplement to the filming. In, in many ways, 
the filming is a supplement to the editing process and when it all comes together and turns into a TV show. When is season one going to premiere? I'm not in a rush because I want them to take time to get it right and we've waited this long. When people ask, I say, I think May, because that's when Game of Thrones usually premiered when they had a similar filming schedule ending in early November, that they usually premiered anywhere from the last week of April to mid-May. And even if, because of the pandemic slowing everything down, even if the premiere turns out to be like the first week of June, I'd still count that as May-ish. Anything from last week of April, the first week of June, May-ish. I don't think we're looking at a situation like Game of Thrones Season 7 where they pushed it back to July. That that would be weird. I, I don't anticipate that happening. I wouldn't mind waiting until July if they take the time to get it right. It's just, it doesn't seem like that's what's happening. That's the filming schedule we're looking at by location, which from a practical level means this is when we can expect spy photos from each of these locations. Right now, I'm sitting around clicking refresh on every major news feed on Reddit, Twitter, Instagram, looking for spy photos from the big tournament scene at Surrey. Mid-October, Caceres, all of our attention will be focused on it. So that's pretty much the filming schedule we're looking at. Then there's a question of, well, what are we going to talk about after season one wraps and there's no more exterior filming and it's just stuff done on computers in their offices? I think we might start seeing teaser trailers mid-October. Possibly. That I said there's a theory going around that if they were going to run a big teaser, it would be during the premiere of one of their big shows. And the only big show premiering between now and Christmas is their big critical hit, Succession, HBO's Succession show, is coming back for its season three premiere on October 17th. So if there's any day between now and New Year's when they might run a teaser trailer, it would be October 17th. When they're pretty much done with filming, and when I say teaser trailer, it obviously wouldn't have any finished CGI in it. It wouldn't be a full trailer, it would be a teaser. But we get excited when they put out, like, new promo photos for characters. So when I say, you know, a teaser, I mean literally, basically just practically still shots of the characters, but in film. Like a three-second clip of Allison just walking down a, a hallway, a five-second clip of just Damon looking at something. Glorified promo photos spliced together into a teaser trailer. But, no, we, we lose our minds over that, particularly because there's still a lot of characters we haven't seen in full costume. So I would be excited by that. I think you guys would be excited by it. You know, sometimes when they put out a teaser trailer, it's really a trailer trailer. I mean, truly a tease, just a, a, a short clip of people in costume. I would be excited by that. When are we getting a full trailer with better CGI uh, possibly New Year's, I don't know, and I could be surprised. But, like, not for another three weeks at least. But things are getting closer. At any rate, that was the filming schedule. Moving on to the next section here, the leaked list breaking down each episode by director. What happened was someone noticed that one of the casting sheets that went out for Lenore Valarian listed off all of the episodes, and which director is attached to which one. They don't have names yet, so just Sapochnik's doing episode one, that sort of thing. And this isn't 100% confirmed, but it seemed reasonably credible that this was a real leak, that this was put on the casting sheet at the time, Though, of course, that's subject to change. You know, sometimes at the last minute, directors trade an episode. But I feel confident in this enough to report on it to you, that this leaked list of which directors are doing which episodes, because there's four directors this year, uh, breaks down like this. Miguel Sapochnik would be directing episodes one. It's vital that you get episode one right, so he's doing episode one, six, and seven. 
Greg Yatanis is doing episodes 2, 3, and 10. Claire Kilner is doing episodes 4, 5, and 9. So they're all doing 3, except for the last one, Gita Patel, who is doing just episode 8. What does this tell us? What can we make of it? What can we at least cross-reference with spy photos? Well, we can try to match this to what these directors seem to be experienced with, that Sapochnik is someone you would trust with important episodes or big battle episodes. In contrast, I don't think Claire Kilner has any background working with action scenes or, you know, big medieval battle scenes like that. And it's not because, oh, because she's a woman and it's sexist. I'm just saying, looking at her resume, she hasn't worked on action films or sequences like that. So I don't think they give her a battle scene episode. And I hate it when people dismissively call it, oh, episodes of people talking in rooms. People talking in rooms could describe half of television when it's not like a, an action scene that obviously there's a difference between like the Battle of the Blackwater episode and an episode of The Crown on Netflix, but it's a difference of scale that when you have just two people talking in a room, it's a lot more focused. You can do a lot more with the cinematography and the fine details of the actors' performances. So they're just different skill sets, different styles of directing, and one isn't superior to the other, they, they're just different. But Kilner doesn't have a background doing action stuff, so I don't think she'd be doing battle episodes. Which is a bit odd, because she's doing episode 9, and some people go, oh, there's a rule that Game of Thrones established a formula that the 9s are always where there's a battle, and then the final episode is more of the aftermath and setting up next season. That isn't a rule set in stone, that for all we know, just because if you read the Rogue Prince novella, it just doesn't work out like that. That, no, you, would, you might want to end with a huge battle in the season finale itself. There's no reason the ninth episode has to have a battle in it like that. Just different format, different story. You can't always put a square peg in a round hole like that. Similarly, talking about director's toolboxes, the director's skill sets, Gita Patel is an entirely different thing altogether. Claire Kilner is very experienced, has done a lot of, you know, regular drama shows, but not, like, battle things. Sapochnik and Yetanis have actually done battle stuff. Gita Patel, though, is mostly known as a documentary filmmaker. That, um, She's Indian, her family is from India, and she visits relatives there on a yearly basis, and I've gone through her background, that she's famous for making this award-winning documentary on the Kashmir conflict. And it's her, she's on the ground, she's talking to people, and they're walking on the streets, it's cinema verite style, you know, documentary film style, and they're looking at soldiers marching, they're interviewing people about the Kashmir conflict and all the violence there. So that isn't people in rooms, that's she's good at filming on the ground, on location. So I don't think she'd film a battle in the logistics of that, but if you had, like, someone hiking up a mountain, a, a really complex exterior thing, or a chase scene, something that she is this on-the-ground documentary filmmaker, which I'm just so curious about, why is she only doing one episode? Is there something unique about episode eight that sets it apart from all the others so much that they felt, no, we need this documentary filmmaker to do it. So I'm interested in the different visual styles and because Benioff and Weiss shackled their directors that they didn't know how cinematography works and they were constantly fighting with their directors. All of them wanted, you know, put cinema into it and they just kept saying, no, make it close-ups of the lead actors' faces. And when I look at other TV shows, just how much of a visual language different directors can have, even within the same show, you can tell this was directed by different people. Like when you're watching Breaking Bad, and you can tell which directors are different, and they're all good in their own ways, that you can't really tell the difference between episodes directed by different people on Game of Thrones.
because it was so restrictive. What have we seen from spy photos that might match this? We've seen spy photos of Yetanis and Kilner, and it pretty much matches what we see here. We saw spy photos of Yetanis filming during the big beach battle scenes, which might have taken place across different episodes at the beginning or end of the season. They might have been mul multiple episodes apart. But we saw him filming near the big beach scene uh, with free, clearly free city soldiers uh, and, and the people staked to the ground for the crab feeder scene. So, yeah, those spy photos of Yetanis filming the crab feeder stuff and the, the war in the Stepstones pretty much matches that he, according to this list, he's filming episodes two and three. That if you look at uh, the story of the first prequel novella, The Rogue Prince, yeah, Daemon fighting in the Stepstones would be in the first third or so. Particularly because we saw that clip of him getting a letter that's apparently that your brother is remarrying to Allison. That would be in like episode two or three. Or was he also filming a beach battle for episode 10? You know, some of these, it's clearly Free City Soldiers. This is episodes two and three. I wonder if some of them were for episode 10. I'll come back to that. But yeah, he's also filming action stuff. It's not just Zapochnik. Kilner, though, we saw on set when they were filming the young Rhaenyra and young Lenor walking on a beach scenes. And one spy photo even showed the clapper that they had, the thing where you clap and, and yell cut, and then, and then the episode starts. And on this clapper, it clearly said episode 105. And if you're saying, oh, well, it, it, that could be scene 105. No, we cross-reference this with the clapper format they used on Game of Thrones. The upper left corner is always the episode number. So we saw, this is all fact, we saw Kilner on location, filming young Rhaenyra and young Lenor for a scene labeled Episode 5. And this matches that this leaked director's list said that she was directing Episodes 4 and 5 and 9. Which also pretty much just matches up with common sense that you'd expect Rhaenyra and Lenor's wedding to be around Episode 6 to 7-ish, depending on what exactly it contains. And now the running theory is that their wedding might be at the end of episode 5 or possibly 6 because their wedding has a big tournament scene. That, like I said, the big tournaments we would need to see in this, like the Blacks and the Greens tournament, which is a few years before her wedding, then the melee tournament at her wedding to Lenore. Those are things I don't think they'd have Kilner do because she doesn't do action scenes that much. I think she's filming the lead-up to that, but then something as important as the, a huge sequence like the Blacks and the Greens tournament or Rainier's wedding uh, melee, those are the type of things you give to Sapochnik. And indeed, he is filming episodes 6 and 7. So I'm not sure if her wedding is in episode 5 or episode 6, but... And this is all assuming they're not doing these as flashbacks, but doing it in chronological order. I'm pretty sure we're going to be seeing young Rhaenyra, young Lane, or young Alicent through episode 5. Possibly transitioning at like the very end of episode 5, or the middle of episode 6. Or we could just start episode 6 with the adults. But yeah, like more or less the first half of this show were with the younger actors. That's the running functional theory I'm working with here. But then we have the issue of minor actors who we found out the roles they're credited as through their acting agencies. You know, like when IMDb lists guardsman number three or something. Sometimes the descriptive name for a background character gives you story hints. In this case, we had one guy from what seemed to be a Kilner episode, you know, it was episode six, a guy who was at the Cornwall shoot in May, who was listed as a mourning merchant, mourning with, with a U, I mean, mourning in grief at a funeral, and he was at the funeral scene. 
So that led us to think maybe Lena's funeral, which is a big story point, is in episode six. Then when does the wedding happen? Because Rhaenyra marries Laenor in the year 114, and Lena dies in childbirth six years later. How could you do that within the same episode? I don't think they're doing that. It might be episode seven. Particularly because there was a second extra who, um, when I say acting agencies, we're going through these things all the time. Things like Mandy.com and a couple of the other local acting agency websites that, that they've listed them in. Another man was listed, Freddie Hill, was listed as Corey's comrade. And we think, what, like Carl Corey, the man who killed Lenor? That Lenor died like two weeks after Lena did, to the point they had a double funeral. So now we're thinking, wait, maybe Lena will die in episode seven. And the mourner thing was just mislabeled or something. Not really sure on that, but you can see the general pattern these things are falling into, and it's pretty much what you'd expect. Stepstones war through episode three, court set up in episodes four and five, tournaments or and or wedding tournaments by episode six-ish, but Lena's death by episode seven, I think. And I know this is broad, but it's it's the best I can do. The clear thing, though, is that Lena's funeral will not be used as the cliffhanger ending of season one. It's around episode seven. Sapochnik would be doing something that important because it involves so many characters. It's everyone from both court factions comes together for it. In universe, the, the maester points out, because everyone from both factions brought their dragons, it was the largest gathering of dragons since the Doom of Illyria, 200 years before. And still, it's like seven to ten dragons, but that's a lot that were in one place at one time. And the complexity, of, even without the CGI, just that every major character is present for this event. The question then becomes, what the heck would they do in episodes 8, 9, and 10? And why is episode 8 so different that they put Gita Patel in charge of it? this documentary filmmaker. This is the biggest issue we're confronted with, the question of, is season one going to end with the beginning of the Civil War, or are they going to invent storylines to pad that out into season two? Like more fighting in the Stepstones and stuff. I talked about that in previous videos. I honestly have no idea. Reviewing the evidence, I'm leaning more towards that the season one finale will end with the outbreak of the Civil War. Though I wouldn't, and the way I'm phrasing it is, I wouldn't rule out at this point that they might be padding it with invented storylines, which I think they should to give it more character development, more time for character development, but all signs currently seem to point the other way. One thing we can be certain of is there will be a time skip between Lena's funeral and the end of season one. Because if you remember the uh, screenshots I posted in other videos of Lena's funeral, we saw, we had footage, actually, spy footage, of this group of young children arriving, who we thought were Rhaenyra's sons with Lenor, the brown-haired sons, plus Daemon's twins, Bela and Reyna. You could recognize this as clearly, they're, they're playing Bela and Reyna as mixed race, and the boys with them must be Rhaenyra's sons. This past week, we got spy photos of two teenaged boys with brown hair, but dressed like Targaryens, talking with Rhaenys on a beach. And I made a whole video about Rhaenyra's boys. These must be Jace and Luke Valarian. Well, the ones we see in those spy photos, very clear spy photos, they're teenagers. Whereas the children we saw at the Driftmark set back in May for Lena's funeral, they're little children. So there must be more time passing by the end of season one, very probably up to the Civil War itself. Because what could they pad out three episodes with? When I say time skip, I mean for the children. I mean, like, Emma Darcy will be playing Rhaenyra over a range of years. So when they start with Emma Darcy, Rhaenyra will have little children. They'll skip ahead five years. They'll be now, like, teenagers, and it'll just be Emma wearing different makeup. You, you know, you don't need to time skip the adults as much when you're time skipping small children. Same thing. I think there's only two Rainiers this season. The young one and the old one. I don't think there'll be like a baby one or a small child one.
Because what else really happens between Lena's funeral, Lenor and Lena's double funeral, and nine years later when the Civil War starts? I talked about this in the video right before this about the Small Council. I said, there's a lot of intrigue stacking the Small Council. There's Cregan Stark fighting his uncle. There's Jane Aaron in the Vale. There's Dalton Greyjoy fighting in the Stepstones. They should put him in. But ultimately, how much could you do to round out these characters? I'm starting to wonder if Season 1 will end with the Battle of Rook's Rest. A big dragon action scene to follow through on that promise of there will be dragon action. Because you see, there's only six dragon versus dragon battles in the entire war. That they're reluctant you know, to have them fight each other because it's very damaging. There's a good chance they'll get killed. Like in chess, you don't send your queen against the enemy's queen. You pick off the weaker units first. There's only six dragon versus dragon fights, and only two of those involved more than two dragons. The other four were one-on-one. -on -one, that they're Right at the beginning, Rook's Rest, and then at the end of the war, at the Second Battle of Tumbleton. And both of those only involved three dragons altogether. That there was never a massive four dragon versus four dragon battle. The, the, that didn't happen. You'd have to go back to Valyria to see that. And Rook's Rest is a pretty big battle. That sometimes you see like one dragon dueling another, but there isn't like an army around. Other battles of the war, it's just regular armies versus regular armies. Like the battle by the lake shore, there weren't any dragons involved, even though it was the biggest land battle of the war. Rook's Rest is one of the few battles where there were dragons on both sides and armies on both sides. Well, a castle garrison, and then the dragon came to rescue them, and then the other side attacked. Anyway, we saw another spy photo during the beach scenes, which, when I zoomed in on it, I think this is the heraldry of House Staunton, the rulers of Rook's Rest. Black and white checked with black feathers on white. That doesn't prove this is Rook's Rest, and again, when you look at the beach scene they were filming all day, it seemed like a battle in the Stepstones, that there were Free City soldiers everywhere. It's possible that they filmed episodes 3 and 10 back to back. That's what I'm trying to emphasize, that maybe we got fooled because one day they were filming Stepstones stuff, and then at the same location they reset the beach and filmed Rook's Rest there for episode 10. Possibly. Or it could just be that someone from House Staunton happens to be in Daemon's army in the Stepstones. Right? Because, like Game of Thrones Season 1, they had the heraldry for everyone. They, they designed all their heraldry in one big burst. So, like, you see a Bolton banner at Rob's War Council, even though there aren't any Bolton characters on screen yet. So maybe the, the Staunton flag was just something they knew they'd need eventually, and this, that doesn't prove this is Rook's Rest. Then again, we saw Rhaenys on set that day. So, I don't know, that, that's pointing towards Rook's Rest. Unless they are inventing some other big dragon battle in the Stepstones to close out Season 1, that's increasingly what things look like. And lastly, whole other separate point here. There was this other weird set of spy photos we got for Matt Smith in Cornwall this past week. Very high quality ones. They're the ones I showed you in the video about him and Dark Sister. That the point where he lays down he and next to his sword in such a way that it almost looks like he's stabbed, but it's, he plunged his sword into the into the sand and just laid down next to it. What I didn't want to talk about then, but I want to talk about now is we then saw photos of Matt Smith in full costume looking really upset and wading into the surf. That he's walking into the surf, and you would not get a high-quality costume wet in seawater like that for no reason. So why is he wading into the surf and then laying on his back he doesn't seem like he's just resting. He seems upset about something. And we saw the clapper for this scene. Just as we saw the clapper for episode 5, we saw the clapper for this one. And it's from episode 10. So now what we're all discussing is what could Daemon be really upset about in episode 10? 
it might be the news that Rhaenys has just died in the Battle of Rook's Rest. Or, more probably, it could be that he just got news that his brother Viserys is dead. And yes, he has a complex relationship with Viserys, but deep down he always struggles with, he's always fighting with his brother, but he still loves him. And yeah, I think even Book Daemon would be you know, upset to hear his, his brother died. He wouldn't show it in public, but like in a private moment, like on a beach, he'd have a moment where he's, oh, my brother is dead. Or that his daughter with Rhaenyra was stillborn. That that's at the same time that her father dies, she when she hears the news that she's been usurped, uh, she goes into premature labor and has a stillbirth. And Daemon might be upset about, well, both of these things. I don't think he's upset about Lena dying, because like I said, all the other evidence is that Lena's funeral is in episode 7. Or when those boys are small children who are teenagers, visibly teenagers, by a later episode. Lena's death is not in episode 10, and here we have Matt Smith reacting to something that sounds like really bad news. Might be just to a military setback in the, in the Stepstones. I think it's, it's that his brother died. But even then, the death of Viserys and the Battle of Rook's Rest are relatively separated events in the source material, that you have the both sides sending diplomatic messages to the Great Houses trying to get them to join one side or the other. You have the major sequence of Amond and Luke both showing up at Storm's End at the same time to court the Baratheons, and then their dragons fight, the dance at Storm's End. Like, would maybe he's reacting to the death of Luke, but not no. Why would you? That was such a one sided fight. You, they wouldn't want to show off the, the dance at Storm's End as the season finale. That might be episode nine. And then they do Rook's Rest in the next episode. But there were all these intervening battles, like the battle on the Honey Wine. I don't know. Because when you actually sit down and write out, the amount of events that need to happen if if you want to get to Rook's Rest by episode 10 and Lena's funeral is episode 7, there you can't do that in only three episodes. But conversely, it's too many to cover a 10-year gap. You need more episodes. So I, I don't know one way or the other how exactly they're breaking down the final three episodes and where season one will end. Sometimes I work my way into thinking one way, then I work my way into thinking the other way. Then again, we got really used to Benioff and Weiss just padding out the later seasons with no information. So much it was just actors staring meaningfully, because they're showing off the actor faces to win Emmy Awards. And they say this in the Blu-ray. We are showing off these performances and these faces. And you've seen the charts showing how the amount of dialogue steadily declined every season, to the point even casual viewers noticed in season 8 how little talking there is. That they counted up the, the word count in the official subtitles. Subtitle files, it was easy to do a word count. Think back to season 1, which officially had the most dialogue in it. Just how packed with information and world-building every single episode was, every single scene was, even compared to season six, when there were giant action scenes that ate up time or actors staring. Think of how much world building they really packed into season one of Game of Thrones. That You could do that with House of the Dragon. They can pack a lot of information into an episode, a competently written TV show of any kind. It's so weird when I watch other TV shows, hour-long drama shows, and go, Wow, so much happened this episode, because I'm so used to Game of Thrones seasons 5 through 8. So, while I might be a little wary of, oh, how could you cover everything up to the Battle of Rook's Rest within 10 episodes, competent writers actually could do that, and I want them to develop the secondary characters, like the Starks and Lannisters and more, but eh, some people want to don't the trope of oh martin keeps saying the dragon battles will happen eventually and i really think so many people were upset that danny didn't immediately invade 
Westeros with adult dragons in season two were so upset of when are the dragons coming, it became a meme, when are the dragons coming, that they sold their souls and were willing to go along with Benioff and Weiser finally blowing things up in season six when the Great Sept exploded or there was a big battle. So many people were, we're not waiting anymore. The action is finally happening, even though the action didn't make any sense that people got that impatient, and then after season eight, everyone turned around and complained, why did they rush it? You know, five years into this, you were complaining, why aren't they rushing it? So you, some people just can't make happy, you know? But I think some of the people at HBO might be of the mindset that we don't want people complaining about the lack of dragon action again, even though you would see Daemon tearing up Free Cities fleets in the Stepstones with his dragon Caraxes, you would see dragon action by like episode three. I think they want a dragon versus dragon fight within the first season by like the season finale. And we might increasingly that we would see Rook's Rest. And they might even move things out of order. They might move the Battle of the Honey Wine to a little after that. Even though it, other stuff moving around. I don't know they could play with the timeline, but. These are the facts as we know them. This is when they are filming in real-world locations. This is what we think is an accurate list of what director is doing what episode. Spy photos confirming they were on set during different episodes. And the last thing I want to leave you with, and I can't, I'm can't, i putting it last to stress it, and I hope you haven't started typing comments before you finished my video. I hate it when people do that. Everyone hates it when people do that because I might have answered your question already. Many of the veteran and respected posters on forums and on Reddit, and shout out to everyone, I mean, not minor people, mainstay people, have been pointing out maybe HBO intentionally filmed fake exterior scenes with Matt Smith just to screw with us. You know, we wondered about that on Game of Thrones, and later they'd admit we did film fake scenes just to screw with spy photos, like Jon Snow and Danny meeting Cersei face to face in King's Landing was faked. That you can't fake something on the scale of they're building a giant tournament set or they're filming King's Landing in the streets of Caceres with huge crowds of extras. You can't fake that. But something small on the level of Matt Smith alone on a deserted beach, hey Matt act really weird and depressed and walk into the surf and lay down next to your sword in such a way it looks like you're stabbed. Seems a little heavy-handed. <laughs> that you think it was an accident they made a shot that looked like that? It, not even, and not even you know, we could tell he got up, it wasn't really a stab, but him acting weird and looking depressed and walking into the surf like he was upset about something, that's something they could have easily faked for the spy drones. Because they knew, like you, you see my reports, they knew there were spy drones in Daily Mail UK that in the young Rainier ones, they were the actors were pointing at the spy drone. They could see it was there. So maybe Matt was just screwing with the spy photo takers. That is a distinct possibility we cannot rule out. And there's only circumstantial evidence that they're filming Rook's Rest. We saw Rainies and older versions of Rhaenyra's sons, and what might be a Staunton flag at what we also thought was filming fighting in the Stepstones. It's equally possible they're expanding the war in the Stepstones to drag into season two. This is something that raises more questions than answers, which is good. It fuels debate among you guys in the comments section. This is something to launch a real discussion about. It feels like two years ago, three years ago again, when we could really debate things, not just go, yup, it's a flag. I'm trying to lay out the evidence for you guys of this is where we stand now. And when I get more spy photos next week, it'll tilt the balance one way or the other. When exactly does season one end? So keep all of these points in mind. We're reasonably sure Lena's funeral is in episode seven. What are they doing in those final three episodes? Because big things like battle scenes, you can't fake. I mean, you can't hide. 
something on the scale of Rook's Rest with that many burned bodies. And it's the question of when we saw the burned bodies at the Stepstone set, was that really the Rook's Rest set? And we just confused the two. We'll have to see, but I'm sorry this video is long, but it's catching up on a dozen, literally a dozen different spy reports and filming reports that I'm now putting all together so that in context you can see how the puzzle fits together, or at least most of it. And what are they filming in Spain? If, where would they film Rook's Rest? And other casting announcements, like if they cast people from the Battle of Rook's Rest, we'll know. So I wish I knew more, but this is me catching up. What do you guys think? Please tell me in the comments, and stick around as we get more reports.